Welcome back. This is episode six of End of Times, where we seek to try to understand, based on biblical prophecy, what the Word of God says, not what man says, but what the Word of God says will happen in the future. And if you have watched episodes one through five at this point, you will understand that we believe we are in that season that Jesus refers to as the end of the age. And episode one and two talked about why we believe we're in that season. So we're going to jump right in. The, during these episodes, we will be going through Revelation verse by verse. We'll, we'll touch on Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Genesis, as well as the Gospels to truly try to understand what exactly it is that we can expect. And that's exactly what the end of times is about. So last time we had talked about, uh, we were in the book of Revelation, and we stopped at... 1 verse 6. We're just going to pick up at verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Now, this is an awesome verse, and the reason this is so, of such significance is because episode 1 specifically referred to uh, Matthew 24, and this is a reference to Matthew 24. If we go back to Matthew 24, and if you haven't watched episode 1, what's taking place in Matthew 24 is the disciples are asking Jesus, um, when are these things going to happen that Jesus refers to as the end of the age? And we're going to pick up in 24 verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and glory. Now this is, again, this is a direct reference to Revelation 1.4. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now. What Jesus is saying in Matthew 24 is the exact same thing he's saying in Revelation 1, verse uh, 7. I'm sorry, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Uh, just like he says in, in Matthew 24 as well. Now, when he says that he's coming for his elect from the four winds, uh, what I believe this is a reference to is the rapture of the church. So we're just going to stay in Matthew 24 for today. I'm going to go on to the next few verses. Now the very next thing Jesus talks about immediately following this reference is uh, the parable of the fig tree. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the very doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things are fulfilled. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. And again, if you take a look at episode one, what I believe this is and what many biblical scholars also believe, it's not just my opinion, it's, it's a common knowledge, is that the blooming of the fig tree is in reference to the Jews becoming a nation again. Every single prophet in the Old Testament prophesied about the Jews becoming a nation again. That is the blooming of the fig tree, and that generation will not pass away until all things have come to pass. Now, of course, then the very next verse we're going to pick up in 36. But of that day and hour, no one knows, no, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father knows. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, 
he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. Now, these verses I just read are a direct parallel to what Jesus is saying in Revelation 1 verse 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. And ultimately what Jesus is saying, if you go back to 29 or, or 30, it says, Sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in on clouds of heaven with power and great glory. With great glory. So these two things are exactly parable, and what Jesus says here is he first then gives us this parable, the fig tree. Um, he tells us that he's coming and what that's going to kind of look like. Um, he gives us the parable of the fig tree, but then he makes a reference to the fact that nobody can know the hour. So I just want to, you know, be very clear. I'm not claiming that I know exactly when Jesus Christ is coming back, because I'm not. What I am saying is he made it very clear that we can know the season, not just can we know, but how we should know, and that we should know the season. And just because we know the season doesn't mean that we know the, when the thief is coming. If, and the generation that saw Israel become a nation in 1948, uh, between then and the time when they are about 120 years old is about 45 to 50,000 days. If, if I was to watch, somebody told me to watch for a thief for 50,000 nights, there's no way I could watch for that thief. So we can know the season, we don't know the day, but we can know uh, the season, absolutely. And as they re reference the rapture in the church here, um, ultimately what Jesus is saying is that when he comes, there's going to be this moment where suddenly two men are sitting in a field and one disappears and the other one's stuck standing there. Two women will be grinding in a mill, one disappears, the other one's stuck standing there. He is coming for his church. The revelation of Jesus Christ is exactly what this entire prophecy is about. Is it's about what he refers to in Matthew 24 as the end of an age. It's the end of an era. It's the time for this new thing to be rebirthed, which is Jesus Christ ruling on earth. But a lot's going to happen between now and then. So if, as we get into Revelation, one thing we're going to talk about is Jesus referenced it here in 24, the tribulation, and we will reference the tribulation uh, a lot as we study Revelation. However, what this tribulation is, is there's a lot going to happen between um, the moment that all this stuff begins and the moment that Jesus Christ returns. And there's this rapture of the church where God uh, takes up his church um, into the clouds and gives them a glorified body, and then they reign on earth with Jesus Christ for a thousand years. And again, we'll spend a lot of time in Revelation talking about that, but I just want to address this rapture of the church at this moment, because Jesus Christ himself said there is a rapture of the church. So um, if there's a question mark on whether or not there is a rapture of the church, we will spend an entire episode on this, because there is absolutely a rapture of the church. Jesus references it right here, and it kind of talks about what that looks like. But it is all over the Bible. There's at least 15 different other references in the Bible regarding what the rapture of the church is like. Regarding that, I'm just going to say that, that it, and I know a lot of scholars disagree with me, um, but most people will say it's a pre-tribulation rapture. I believe, uh, based on scripture, that it is not. It is a post-tribulation rapture. Um, and as we talk about the rapture, we will talk about that. So as the church goes, you know, again, this is just kind of my own belief on this, and there's a lot of great arguments against what I believe. Um, but as we talk about the rapture of the church, we will spend some time in that. So uh, the rapture of the church is definitely something that takes place in Revelation um, at the end of the age. But again, I believe it's at the end that the, the church will play a huge role in the tribulation, um, including the witnesses and the two witnesses and that kind of thing. A lot of things in, in Revelation just simply can't take place if the church is not present. So. Um, as we talk about that, I'd love to hear your thoughts um, on the rapture. Definitely put them in the comments below because um, it's, it's an interesting topic. If, if, as a church, if we get raptured before the tribulation, well, a lot of what's going to happen in Revelation doesn't apply to us at all. Um, but if it's post-tribulation rapture, then we play a huge role in this. Um, and I believe that's why it's so important to understand what is going to happen. That way we can understand what it is we are to do because as Christians, we have a role in this. And it's very important that we follow these instructions that God has specifically given us because 
Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. Um, Jesus referenced it in Matthew 24. He gave us clear directions on when this season will, will be taking place and how we can know we are in the season. But then he also says he comes as a thief in the night and prepare for the rapture of the church. Um, and all this is just kind of wrapped up in this little bitty verse here in verse 7, Revelation 1 verse 7. So as we continue to go verse by verse through Revelation, uh, we may spend the next time talking about the rapture of the church. We might pause here. Um, and kind of talk about the rapture of the church because it's, it's a very important piece. Um, understanding where we fit in as the church is going to play a big role in understanding Revelation. If you see yourself living through the tribulation, we uh, read this very differently than if we pictured ourselves completely gone out of this scenario. Uh, if we're raptured up before the tribulation, then a lot of this just simply doesn't apply to us. But if we see ourselves there, it, you're going to find out. It, 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 we play a major role um, in the battles of the end of the age, and it's very significant uh, to understand what it is we are to do because God gives very clear instructions to this. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the rapture of the church. Uh, please put them in the comments below. Please give Bible references too. Don't just say, well, I think this or I think that. Like, Give a reference to uh, why pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. Um, it's not necessarily important because one day we will find out, <laughs> but I believe, um, and I said in the beginning of episode one that I'm going to try to keep it very clear what is very literal in the Bible and what I just simply believe, but uh, there's several verses um, throughout Corinthians, um, throughout Matthew, throughout Revelation and in Daniel that refer to this um, rapture of the church and I think it's very clear that it's a post-tribulation rapture. I, I don't really, I, I don't have a lot of evidence on for a pre-tribulation rapture. Um, I think a lot of times people just, especially pastors, um, it's easier to talk about the tribulation if, if you're telling the audience that they won't be there when it happens is maybe why uh, they talk so um, much about a pre-tribulation rapture. I don't know, again, I'd love to hear your comments below. Uh, but we are living in that time. I highly recommend if you haven't watched episodes one through five, go take a look, especially episode one and two. Um, it's very important that we understand that we are living in the season. Jesus made it very clear. Ezekiel made it very clear. Um, and Jeremiah made it very clear, as did Solomon to some degree, uh, that we are living in that season and that we know we are living in that season because of the rebirth of Israel, which every single prophet in the Old Testament prophesied about. Uh, from the very beginning of the Bible to the very end uh, was this coming of the kingdom. And the way we can know is when you see Israel become a nation again, that that generation will not pass away until all things are complete, uh, according to Jesus in Matthew 24. So thank you for watching. I think this is an exciting ride. Uh, again, I think we're going to spend next time talking about the rapture of the church. Um, and uh, then we'll just kind of keep going verse by verse through Revelation. And then, then we are going to pause probably by Revelation, by chapter 5 and go into Daniel because uh, we want to talk about timelines and how we can know, well, how long is the tribulation, that kind of thing. So, um, and what we can expect while, while we're going through it. So thank you for watching. What a great ride this is going to be. It's exciting. Keep in mind, I'm just going to reference Revelation uh, 1 verse 3, blessed is he who reads and those who keep and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. There's definitely blessings in it for you to take the time to understand these for the time is near. Thank you for watching this episode of God Family Guns. If you have any comments, put them in the comments below. Um, if you have any prayer requests, never hesitate to leave those. But thank you again for watching this episode of God Family and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.